And why did you, why did you carry that? So if you, if, but the book, the, the title of my book is The African Dream, My Journey Back to Africa. So I talk about that as, again, I left the continent thinking it was better out there than it is on the continent. That was my mindset back then. Then I get there, I get the reality check that it's actually hard. I mean, I remember, quick story, um, I, get, I was staying at my uncle, my aunt and uncle, and uh, every Sunday I had to cut the grass. I never cut the grass before. I was like, what? I called my mom, you know, I was a spoiled kid. I called my mom, I said, man, this is crazy. I got to do dishes and cut grass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Africa, you get the good life, you know? And then, uh, then you deal with problems that you never deal with. You know, you have racism in the States, right? I was in the South, so it's, it's, it's a big problem. But it's the hardest country I was. And it, it, it opened my eyes. And, um, and I felt like, but you know, I was still, I was so stubborn. I was stubborn. What changed my mind, so I came back in 2009 in London for, for three days with my first born, my daughter. And I was amazed by the change. Because I left in 96. Came back in one but it was still, uh, you know, uh, still not. But I came back in '09, yeah. high rises. So I felt like I was gonna miss something. Yep. You know you, 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 see, you see a cruise yeah. man looking good, man. You're like, man, I gotta get on that cruise, man. <laughs> and that was uh, that was the, the and from that moment. I said nah, I need to come back. And from '09, so it took me four, well, three, three and a half years to prepare myself to come back. Because I didn't want to come back without a project, without a, something to do. But from that moment, I decided I was going to come back. Like, talking about your book, like, you have a book. Yeah, what, what will people expect? What is going to be the biggest takeaway from the book? Because I'm really curious. I want to hear all of the story and the journey. And I don't know what is the first person to read? It's going to be funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be no, funny. Man, just tell all us. the dumb stuff I used to do, man, when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I used to believe there was a shortcut to success, you know, to doing quick rich uh, uh, businesses. You know, those businesses they promise you're gonna be a millionaire yeah. in three months. I, I did it all, man. Uh, getting in trouble. Uh, I I don't want to spoil it, man. I, it was a fun project. You know, I was a black sheep in my family, right? I was never good in school. I was a, a rebel all the time. Always going against establishment. Uh, you know. Always uh, pumping head with my parents, especially my mom. So, looking back now, I can put a title of author. It's, it's still weird in my brain, man. It's still weird, but it's fun, man. I, I, I enjoy the journey. Like, if you, if you would go back to start your business all over again, what would you change? What would I change? Which business? The area. You know, it's, it's important that you go through the journey. The journey really will feed your brain with the right information to become successful. Like I said, there is no shortcut to success. I learned the hard way. If, 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 if you don't go through the journey, you don't appreciate the result of that journey. Right? So I like the struggle. I like all those things because it, it allowed me to appreciate where I come from, all the, 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 the hurdle I went through. So I won't change anything. Uh, and even my bad behavior as a young kid. When I say young kid till I was like 20 plus, uh, I talk about it. You know, really what, what changed my life is the birth of my daughter. I had my daughter at 24. That really changed my life. Because I couldn't mess up anymore. You know, I, I had to get my act together. So that would be, without her, my life would be uh, really interesting. But that would change it. Awesome. So like we are getting to the end of the chat. Hope you guys uh, are tweeting. Uh, make sure you uh, tag uh, Startup Grind Kigali because we're not going to see it. Uh, Henry, so what, what, what book recommendations will you give out to, like, what are your top three go-to book, uh, go books that you say? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm yeah. not going to waste your time. I don't yeah. read that much. Okay. Um, but my best book I ever read was Thinking Go Rich and Unstoppable. Man, that book really touched me, man. You, you, if you think you got problems, read this book. Because <laughs> you don't got problems. Those guys got problems. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So, any more questions from there? Um, you, you mentioned a training program you did, the corporate training program you did, and it changed your mindset about sure. what to be an entrepreneur. Yes. Did you just talk about like what, what's the takeaway of what? what I, so, so some part of the training was how the top 1% of the population, they all have businesses. Well, the rest are working for paycheck. While you chance to increase your paycheck, uh, your, your, your chance to be successful in business is much higher than uh, becoming a successful uh, at a job. You know, um, another thing was, um, I'm trying to remember, I mean, uh, there was, uh, I mean, it was all this data, man. It was like, uh, it, 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 I remember that the training was like, the training was talking about look at all the successful people they don't have jobs right people say job is is, is a risk uh, but actually it's, it's, it's a bigger risk than starting your own business and they were talking about starting a business about investing in yourself there was a bunch of stuff uh, that they were talking about again it's a mind shift because I was, I was programmed from from day one by my parents society and all you you go to school you have good grades you get a job you know you work for 30 plus years and you retire and then you hear this and then you, you hear somebody coming with data telling you hey look look man you're not going to be successful with the job i remember funny they used to call a job just over broke. that was the the, the the slogan that they had on the train so, so absorbing all this information starts shifting my mindset because I'm very practical and, and I use common sense. You know, to me it was common sense, you know. Uh, and, and that's some of the things uh, that uh, I remember from this one. So like, what's the future of AIR? And um, do you think you are getting there fast enough? No. You know, I, I, I'm very demanding, so I'm never fast enough. Um, I'm never satisfied with our performance. But that's just the, the hunger in me. And I'm, I'm highly critical of myself. That's what I can be focused on. Right? I feel like if you can become complacent, you relax and you feel like you're doing good, that's when you start messing up. Uh, the future is uh, 20 countries in the next 10 years. And at some point, some type of exit. Nice. Yes. What kind of partnership do you have in Rwanda that are making a difference in your company? Different. So I would say Enable is a good partnership we have. We're actually expanding our partnership. Uh, you said different, it's spreadsheet, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, but you, you mean spreadsheet, it's kind of different. The yeah, company. Spreadsheet. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. it impacts it. Because yeah. again, Enable is corporate services, you know, digital services, but it's still a big challenge for them. But, and then they came on board uh, pretty quickly. I like, I like companies like this that understand that you have a solution that can solve their problem. Um, but even when we got we have a good partnership with World Vision. They do our training, blah, blah, blah. So we operate in refugee camps also, we like to ask. Of course, we don't make any money there, but it's, it's part of our, our social impact uh, approach. Um, when I, when I, at least my definition of good is, is, is directly related to the impact. Not economics. Not economics. No, 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 not economics. I mean, of course, the economics uh, partnership, the best we have is Microsoft. So Microsoft has been very supportive of that technology and, and give us a little bit of money. Um, yeah, so here we have some, we would like to see more. Teleco is the biggest challenge. So if you post them, let's put pressure on them. So <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, yes. Yes, you mentioned data somewhere, and uh, I want to know if it's a source of revenue here. I want to know really the ecosystem of uh, sharing data with researchers and advertisers and stuff. No one says it openly in the here, and I want to know really how that stuff. So we don't share data, right? So our platform is a, the Wi-Fi system is a point of distribution and collection of data. So a company paid us to do so. So uh, to do survey one day you need authorization from the statistic department. So you can't just uh, throw a survey out there. But most of those companies are already been approved. They just use our platform to collect data. And because we sell digital services, we can incentivize users by giving them free airtime, free access to internet to fill out the survey. Uh, and because it's offline, it has no cost to the user. Uh, so it's a different model. We'll be testing the, uh, the red cost. All this, we, we develop it with other, other partners. 
Uh, your neighbor also is interested in that platform. But uh, I'm not sure why they know. So we don't, you're right, data collection is very sensitive here. Though. Actually, you, you need authorization from Google for, for hardware, like a Wi-Fi system. So there's a lot of licensing going on. Uh, but I don't think it's taboo. I mean, at least for me, I talk about what I know. So, but yeah, you, like any country, you have to follow the laws, right? So you get highly regulated, and you have to follow the regulations. And, and uh, is this something you want to push in the future? Of course. Uh, like keep collecting data. Do you push that to? So as a model again, we, we don't collect data for us. Companies use our platform to collect their data. So we charging them for the platform. Uh, data collection, we still have a long way to go because monetizing data, we, we still not there. We do collect a lot of data on the sales that we do with individual services, but we only collect phone numbers. So I can tell you, for example, how many unique customers we served last year, how many overall and all those things. But you're not allowed, so for example, we're applying for a tax collection uh, um, license to, to, to do taxes and like, to, to, for people to come and pay taxes. So they, they're very specific on what you can and cannot do. Uh, so yeah, it's a uh, very, very high rate. Okay, there's no other question. Uh, so what, what, what question were you expecting me to ask you that I didn't ask you? <laughs> me? Yes.